win by? Two four points. points. Four, four points. points. Four points. Yeah. I will make it. One will be even. All the way. Dublin are very confident. So are we. We just got the tickets ladders. We've got the 15 men. We've got the support of the Islands. And all we need now is that. The night last. They kept it under wraps, as you can expect, of course. He didn't respond to treatment, failed a fitness test this morning. And so Martin Shovelin is out of the Donegal team. He's going to get uh, changed. He'll be in the dugout. I'm not too sure if he could come on if needed. Now, his replacement is 24-year-old John Joe Doherty, a direct replacement. Uh, now, I'm not quite sure. I've heard a little word that perhaps he will not be in at uh, left half-back. There's a suggestion ba that Barry McGowan might well come out to left half-back. That would make sense and John Joe Doherty would go in at right corner back. That we'll have to see in a little while from now. Dublin unchanged, Paddy Cullen was telling me a little while ago, they're all raring to go as you'd expect. Oh, Mark, uh, Mark and Shovelin, of course, will be with him, Brian McInnick uh, there as well, but uh, for him and his colleagues to go through there, a very big day. Dr. Bonner, of course, forward, uh, on the team, making his way to John Reed. Uh, much will depend on his shoulders and half back in his team this afternoon. That's a magnificent occasion, and... Um, the atmosphere is tremendous, you know, it's, uh, I don't think I've, probably maybe an old firm game has been the closest to this. <laughs> yes, and all Donegal seems to be here, Pat, tickets or no tickets? Yes, I think there's nobody left in Donegal, there'll probably be chaos going down the border tonight, but it's, uh, ah, it's a great occasion for our county and it's something we all dreamed of and it's happened and uh, we're going to enjoy it no matter what. Yes, sir, would you like to be playing? I would, uh, although I'm enjoying being here as a fan, but uh, certainly uh, you've got to think about when you, as a player and looking at people out there playing, you would say, oh, well, I, how could I do this or could I do that better? Or, and that's the way you think as a player, you know. And the atmosphere before the match, Pat, you were meeting people uh, all around. The atmosphere was special. How much did you enjoy that? Oh, it was tremendous. You know, in the round of the town this morning, uh, everybody from home was there, you know, and they were all, they had, some of them had sore heads after a good night last night, but they, they were enjoying themselves. That's what it's all about, enjoyment, you know, the, the sport, that's what it's about. And the main business for the players, Pat, Donegal, they have a great chance. They have a great chance, you know, it's a one-off, they're here and they've, they've made it to All-Ireland, they have created history now and uh, they're relaxed, I think, pressure's on Dublin, uh, they have been before and they're expected to win this one, but uh, the Donegal lads that come out, they'll give it a 100% and that's what it's all, that's all Great to see you, Pat Bannon, thanks very much. Delighted. Well, on to the pitch here at Crone Park, their first ever time to run out of those dressing rooms at Crone Park for an All-Ireland senior final. Uh, apologies if we just missed uh, the chairs that greeted them for you, but in actual fact, the Donegal team has come out of the dressing room at least two minutes earlier than we expected. So, uh, as I said, our apologies about that. But those are the men who are sitting down and kneeling down for the photographs that will be on every wall and every pub and every household in Donegal over the coming months. I don't expect win or lose here this afternoon, but I'm sure they'd be hoping that that's a winning picture of the Donegal team. The Dobbs are due out in a couple of minutes. Uh, it's one little ploy, if you like, I think, that Dublin like to impose that their opponents go out onto the pitch first. Uh, at Croke Park, so that the opposition has to listen to the cheer that greets the Dubs then a moment or two later. And John Mohan, I think you will know that from your own experience as well, Sean here. Can do. So it's a, ma it's a mammoth task for Donegal. They're capable of doing it. They've beaten Derry. Uh, you know, they have, they have beaten Mayo. They're, they're in the All Ireland final. They've been here before in semi finals. But this is a big one, and it is different. We interrupted you on the point that you were making about Donegal, what they've got to do with this one. They've got to make sure that Dublin forwards don't get space. Double forwards get space or get time, then they'll exploit it. John O'Leary, fullback Jerry Hargan, the captain, Tommy Carr, and the wing forward and free taker, of course, Charlie Redmond. Indeed, free taking may well be one of the key skills in today's showdown, a real test of nerve and resolve on such a high pressure occasion. But that terrific welcoming ovation from their fans, and with Martin Shovelin's withdrawal through injury, Sonny Gold now showed two changes from the team that started against Mayo. John Joe Doherty is introduced into the backs while Manus Boyle takes up duty at number 15. Positional switches show James McHugh listed at right half forward alongside his brother Martin with Joyce McMullen completing the half forward line. McMullen happy to be recalled to the side following his substitution against Mayo while Manus Boyle from Killy Beggs is positioned at left corner forward. And the referee this afternoon, Tommy Sugru, I suppose if he always remembered, and he'll remember it even more, of course, if the Sam remains here, round about five o'clock. Even Bart is there, joining the dubs. Two in the year, that somehow or other it'll be good news for them. Remember in 1972, they won the Ulster for the first time. 1982, their first All-Ireland success at under-21 level. And now 1992, hoping that they'll not alone play in their first final, but win it as well. 
Mind you, Colm O'Rourke, teams coming into their first final and winning it at the first attempt, it's a difficult thing, something which Brian McInnes will readily admit. ...in their first final and winning, but there, there's a double, double pressure on Donegal in playing Dublin at home, and of course also the fact now that they have to start without Martin Shoblin, who has been one of their better players, and uh, I feel very sorry for Martin, I can remember it. Yes, he looked particularly sad when we talked to him earlier. We uh, gathered there from that toss that Anthony Malloy would seem to have won the toss and it looks like he's going to play from right to left. There's not a great deal of breeze around right and Donegal fans and the substitutes of Darol Bahar training making their way in as the players prepare to be introduced. In a moment they'll meet the president. A whole new experience for them and it's a fantastic thing for a county in general because it puts everybody in good humour if you have a county team going well and uh, Dublin probably wouldn't just have that uh, same tight-knit feeling that there would be. In the second in the role of honour behind Kerry with 21 All-Ireland wins. The first in 1891 when Young Ireland beat Clondruhet from Cork by two goals and a point to one goal and nine. At that time of course a goal outweighed any number of points. Dublin also one of the following year, 1892. So. Uh, 100 years on, I suppose, hoping to bridge the gap. Not like 100 years, of course, but about nine years since Sam Ogue was last on Lippy's side. Jack Sheedy there, and Niall Guiden, Desi Farrell. He's got strong connections, indeed, with Donegal. Spent most of his holiday time in Donegal and uh, is a close friend of Noel Hegarty, the fair we expect will be marking him this afternoon. Paddy Russell and Tommy Sugru there. All being introduced to Her Excellency. Splendid setting, of course, the sun brightly shining, and now it's Anthony Malloy's turn. The big Donegal cheer, the midfielder, as we said, who retired, but came back. A Donegal side that in July lifted the anglo Celts Cup for the fifth time, breaking that uh, Croke Park barrier that's taken them 20 years and all to finally demolish since they emerged from Ulster in 1972, led then as now by Brian McInniff. And getting through that semi-final door, well, that was the obstacle that has fought them up to now. Lots and lots of cameramen in there to record the happy scene, of course. So many people who are here, who'd like to be here, must remember Mick Tynan, the former Limerick player. Not too well at the moment, he's in Black Rock and wished well by all his friends, by Eamon Cregan and by people in Limerick and Dublin and New York as well, Mick, and uh, I send you my greetings as well. <laughs> yes, indeed, you were mentioning uh, Brian Murray. He was uh, in Sligo Hospital there for treatment last week on that thigh injury, and there was a concern about him, but, uh, well, he's been deemed fit to take his place. Just in the parade now behind John Joe Doherty, the number 24, he got that very late call-up in place of Martin Shovlin. A more sea of colour there as the teams march behind their respective captains. Dublin led by left corner back, Tommy Carr, Danny Gold marching behind that other great rallying force, Anthony Malloy. Dubliners threading the paths already crossed by people like Kevin Hefferton and Des Foley, while Danny Gold fulfilled the dreams of previous generations. People like Sean Perreter and Michael McClune, who I'm sure will every moment of today's match with their heroes. In terms of individual clashes this afternoon, Colm, what about that clash between the very much informed Vincent Murphy or Vinnie Murphy, who gives the side such direction in attack, and Donegal's top defender, Matt Gallagher? Yes, that would be. I suppose the two clashes between the full backs and full forwards on both sides could be very interesting. Matt, but Matt Gallagher probably has no other choice uh, except to get out in front and try and win possession. Well, it's one of those intriguing clashes that we're really looking forward to. A splendid setting. Gripping tension around the place, but there's great colour. It always seems to me that when an Ulster team in particular gets down here, well, somehow they bring that extra bit of glamour with them. And of course, Dublin in a final, well, almost a unique atmosphere for them as well. The Artane Boys band leading the way, young John Duffy, 17 years of age today. Again going through it there, and his godmother, Annie Gochran from Glenty's watching this on television from Letterkenny, the General Hospital there, wishing him well, of course. Tony 
Jeremy Boyle, one of those that Colin was talking about with a very, very heavily strapped left knee. A huddle. Perhaps we should have a competition. Huddle of the Year award. In the support of Donegal and Dublin, the big D's.